Hey, hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Ah, oh, I'm so excited that you were here. This is actually our final episode of the season for this Booking Magnet Magic series. As you know, I did this series to complement the Booking Magnet Live Actress Conference, which at the time of this recording is happening next week, July 15th and 16th in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm so excited. There's still time for you to get your tickets. It's gonna be an epic event. And so I have spent, as you have heard, and been watching and listening, I've been interviewing some of the industry's top performers and industry experts, and you are in for a final treat today, and you get to meet my friend, amazing actress and musician, Laura Nini. You know Laura most recently by her breakout performance as Marilyn Pearson in the NBC hit series, This Is Us. She is a musician, she's deep into the theater, she's a producer, she's, honey, she's all the things. And what she is, is she's a straight no chaser, she keeps it real, her energy is high, and she's such a beautiful bright light in this industry. You're gonna love this interview. You are gonna love this interview. You know, it's nice to talk to my colleagues who have been in the game for a minute. And so they have a, a very unique perspective on what it takes to thrive and sustain a healthy, happy, whole acting career. Doesn't mean it's always easy, but if you love it, man, it's worth it. So enjoy this interview with Laura Nini. Yes, I am here with Laura Mimi. Laura, woo-woo, yes. Y'all, Laura will bring the energy. She Before, as soon as we got on, honey, the music is blasting. Shaka Khan was the, is the tone of the day. Yes, it is. Shaka. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, Laura. thank you so much for having me. Thank I feel... You. Thank you for saying yes. We're And we're overdue a hangout. We, yeah. Laura and I, we like to go hiking or go for a walk or something. And we just, honey, she's been booked and busy. I've been booked and busy. We've been, yes, we've been we busy. Yes, um, we have. Look at that. Yes. So this these conversations, y'all, if you've missed any part of this series, make sure you catch up. They We've been sharing these on Wednesdays on the YouTube channel um, and on the podcast if you just want to listen. But these stories are just so juicy and so yummy for your soul. And I was excited to invite Laura because she and I have had some deep conversations just personally over the years. And I just thought you would just be a lovely addition to this. So thank you for that. And no one does it alone, you know? So it's, it's just, it, it's, it's what we need. We need. Yes. Well, let's dive in. Where are you from? How did you get started in, now I know you've done many things in entertainment, so I'm going to focus. You can tell me the journey. I'm I'm asking about the acting, but I'm curious to know how things have one thing led to the another. Y'all y'all hear what I'm talking about in a minute. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, well, I'm a third generation Angelino. Woo woo. And um, so I grew up in this business. My mom's a producer, but I will say I was always um, involved in the arts from a from a little girl. I was always either in dance. I was, you know, in music or. Um, or whatnot. And, you know, the pivotal time I was thinking about this because I know that, I don't know, recently I was just thinking about what, how, what, how the trajectory of the career as an actor started for me. And I remember, you know, my, my folks got divorced when I was, I don't know, 13 or something. And I was a troubled teen. I was definitely a troubled teen. And I, I desperately, one of my best girlfriends was in the theater classes. And I, uh, I, you had to have a certain GPA to get into these theater classes and um, I, they wouldn't let me audition. And so I ended up in the music, in the, you know, in the choir. And um, I just, I just loved it. I mean, that, that was, you know, was always performing. I needed, I needed a vehicle. I needed something to, you know, and you hear that a lot with performers that, you know, something traumatic happens and, you know, we need an outlet. That's why I love, you know, I love people advocating like Flea, who's the bass player from the Chili Peppers, started a conservatory here in Los Angeles for music and, you know, because they don't have enough money in, in, in the schools for the arts, you know, and how important they are, how important they are. And so I got into it Music kind of was was the thing that ended up happening for me, 
I will say that during summers, my mom would always let my friends and I be extras in whatever project she was working on. Oh, how cute. Yeah, it was really fun. And so, um, so I, that's how I got my SAG card, you know, a guy, a, a gentleman by the name of Gil Cates, who's since passed away, but um, he was a lovely man and she did a lot of projects with him. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I worked on a thing with him and that's how I originally got my SAG card. Um, so I, I got mad props for people who are extras, extras. That's a, it's a real deal, man. It is a real deal. And I, uh, you know, I started a little later in life, you know, to be honest with you, I really dug into, uh, acting a little later. I was in music. I played bass and toured, in, you know, with, with, with different bands. And I, you know, I started, uh, getting into, I worked at a theater. I got a job at a theater, the Odyssey Theater, right here in Odyssey. I know the Odyssey. I did a show there years ago. Yeah. And I, um, and I'm so grateful because I got in the right way. I got in the way for, for me, that was for me, which is really learning about, I feel like a theater is an actor's forum, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, TV's a writer's film is a director's, but the theater is where we get to shine, you know? And so, um, so for me, it was great to learn all the classics and to kind of, you know, they, they did a lot of experimental work as well. And so I just, I just got to learn so much about the craft of acting. And I was in a theater company mm-hmm. and then I started a theater company and theater was kind of the base of where I started out, you know, mm-hmm. and I always had this philosophy that I was always going to surround myself with people who are more talented that, than I was. Mm. And, and I still do that because uh, it makes me grow. You know what I mean? I get to be, I'm a little fish, but I get to be able to, you know, expand and grow and they challenge me, you know? So I was working with some amazing actors uh, in the theater and uh, just the real deal. And, and then, you know, like anything, it's, you know, we're in LA, we're not in New York. So it's, it's hard. You have to be able to make money, you know? And so I uh, pretty early realized that, you know, if I wanted to start making money as an actor, I was really going to have to focus on TV and Mm -hmm. film, mostly TV here. Right. And so that's been my trajectory. And I just dug in and I dug in really, really hard. It was, (laughs) and I still do, as we know, I mean, it's like, you know, we have that philosophy is like, I'm going to outwork because I started late. I had to make up for all of my peers who were at Juilliard and NYU and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So I was like, well, I'm going to outwork. I'm going to outwork them. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, stay up all night and do, you know, do what I need to do to, to catch up, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm still kind of like that. So it's, it's, that's been kind of my trajectory a little bit. I love it. What a a journey. And it's inspiring too, for those of you watching and listening who think, oh, I didn't start when I was, you know, 15 in high school or right out of college. Like it's, we need you at any point in age. Like, Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I've got some 70 year old clients that talk about them all the time. Like it's not too late. It is not too late. So never growing up with your, you know, being surrounded by entertainment you know, with your mom. And when you watched movies, what was your favorite thing to watch? Let me just not make an assumption. Was it TV shows? Was it movies? Was it comedies, drama? Was it, like, what was the main thing that drew you in? Well, I was a latchkey kid. So I was all about TV. It was <laughs> all about TV for me, you know? Uh, so, you know, in, in fact, we, you know, we had a rule that in my house that I could only watch a limited amount of TV. And I used to go to my friend's house to, you know, to do, to do all my watching of TV. But I will say what's interesting is that I guess it's one of those things that when your parents do it, you, you have no desire to do it. You do the opposite thing. And so since my mom was in the entertainment industry, I had no desire to be in the entertainment industry in that way. You know what I mean? I, I gravitated towards music and I knew that was going to be I think, but I was, I was so anti the industry until later. And then of course she got out and, you know, now I'm, you know, it's struggling along like everyone else. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, I, yeah, I watched all the, all the TV shows that came out in the seven. I mean, you know, like Norman Lear was mm-hmm. I mean, not to date myself, but he was, you know, and still is just 
you know, he changed television. So, you know, you know, and so I, I used to love watching those shows. I mean, earlier on, I was into, you know, even, you know, they had after school specials, you know. I for, love after school specials. Yeah, that were just. It was like our own mini movie. It was a, our girl. It felt like a grown up movie to me back then. <laughs> like I remember like, girl, uh, what was it? The Boy in the Plastic Bubble or something. Wasn't it like a, that like an after school kind of thing with John Travolta and. <laughs> Glennis O'Connor. Oh my God. I love that. Movie. I love that TV show. Amazing. I don't even remember that one. I remember the one that sticks out. And again, y'all, I'm really going back in time. <laughs> I just remember there was an episode which really did scare me. Like it was, a, they approached the subject of like LSD. And I never forget there was a kid on top of the school roof trying to fly. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and I was just like, I'm not, ne- I don't know, never doing <laughs> whatever TV that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, they hit it hard. They hit yeah. it hard. Yeah, yeah they don't, I don't do, I wonder, kids, who's watching? Do they give y'all after school specials anymore? <laughs> we just have reality TV and like t- TikTok. <laughs> but when you were watching, even though that wasn't your, you weren't saying, I want to do that necessarily. Who were some of the performers or what was it about some of the people you watched that made you lean in? You know, every, there's always someone who has that spark. Even when you're watching a place, it could be the person in the back, but they've got a little something extra. Like what um, was it about those people? Like, what, you know, it's mostly musical stuff. So it was Elvis Presley. It was Barbara Streisand. Ooh, you, you know, it was, it was uh, even Donnie and Marie. They had like this variety show that was like... <laughs> It was so kitsch, but I loved it. I loved it as a kid. Those kind of uh, those kind of shows and and anything with Barbara Streisand, I just I just loved her. And yeah. yeah, I remember when Elvis died. It was like big thing in our house. I mean, I was a big Elvis fan. So you know, yeah, those were those were the the people growing up that I was really into. I'm trying to think if there was any actors, well, Barbara Streisand, but yeah, that I was really when I was little, we're talking when I was little, right? Or, and even as you've, as you've grown, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't all have to be when you're just, I'm just curious as you've evolved over the years, like maybe even now we can fast forward to now. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. You watch, you watch so much more, you watch TV and films for work, you watching them to prep, you watching them to be inspired. Oh, yeah. And I'm a, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of this actress. Her name is Sarah Lancashire, Lancashire, I think, Lancashire. She's a British actress, and mm-hmm. she's just she's playing right now. She's playing Julia Childs in the in the series. She's just a wonderful, wonderful actress. A lot, very much like Olivia Coleman. Just mm-hmm. you know, just incredible comic timing, but is just just an incredible actress. You know what I mean? And so those are two women that I'm just gravitating towards, and I just love everything that they do, and I just watch. And, you know, that's the thing about acting. It's really hard when it's, when it's done in, when it's done to perfection, it's invisible, right. it's visible, you know? So I learn more from bad acting than I do from good acting. Do you know, <laughs> I learned so much like, oh, they don't have any, any coffee in that coffee mug. Oh, right. they don't, they're not looking at the road while they drive. Oh, right. you know, I mean, just little things that you notice on TV and you're like, oh, that, yeah, that doesn't, you know, that translates yeah. to when you, you know, when you're on set, the, the things that we have to do to take care of ourselves on set. Mm. No, I need more coffee in my coffee mug because it doesn't look real or whatever it is. Right. You know what I mean? Doesn't look feel, doesn't even feel real when I pick it up, you know, so I, yeah. I, I might be telling that truth. I love it. You know, there's always some, I always say there's, that is the training ground now. Like you can, you can create your own, what I call my own masterclasses just when I turn on my own television. You yeah. know, I'm always talking about, you know, especially on this series, how each and every one of us has something that's magnetic, something that draws us in and something that's magical about us. You know, I would say, don't reinvent the wheel, just throw some rims on it. And guess what? You are the rims, Laura. Laura shows up. It's just Laura. Right. Right. I love that. It's so, so that- true. It's so true. And the earlier that you can get that, the better, because I'm, you know, at this ripe old age, I'm like, I'm just now getting it. And it's, it's like, Oh my God, you know, all those things that you hear and I'm like, you are enough and bring you and your special sauce. And it's like, you know, I always wanted to kind of have a blank slate. I wanted to be a blank slate. I want to be invisible and go into another character, but 
the thing that sets us apart is how how we interpret it, you know? And so I'm noticing more and more the stuff that I do book is stuff that has, you know, has my stamp on it, you know? And so with right in alignment with that, the more, now that you're getting to know yourself more and sit in what Laura brings to the table, what right now could you say that you know for sure when you walk in a room, when you walk on a set, when you hit record on a self tape, like what is it that you know you you know now that you uniquely bring? Oh, that I uniquely bring? Mm -hmm. I know now that before I do anything, it's got to be fun. I have to be in a in zone to have fun and let's play, let's play. So I know that going into it, I have to be relaxed. The most important thing for me before I go on set is to just relax. You know, so we're, I have this ritual. I get my car cleaned the, the day before I'm, I'm on set. Everything's just clean and, and I never make plans to do anything the day before, the whole day before I go on set. Mm-hmm. Because I want to make sure that I'm just in a very not rushed space, kinetic space at all, yeah. well rested, whatever. And and so that's that's important. But what have I learned about what I bring? God, you know, that's such a great question. I don't I don't know. I guess if there were if it, it's interesting. About five years ago, I was told I was a quirky actress, and I was like, what? No, I'm not. I have depth. I'm a depth. I'm a deep, you know, what? I mean, I'm, you know, I can do comedy, but I, I just, I, somebody described me as quirky. And then I kept hearing it again. You know, when you hear it in threes, you're so quirky. You're so quirky as an actor. You're so quirky. It was like, what? And now it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just lean into, you know, some more. And then this is in the comedy thing, but mm-hmm. even sometimes in drama, you know, a dramedy, just lean into that a little bit more as opposed to fight it. Yeah. Just, in general, stop fighting the things that, you that know, are I, coming off of you that are coming off or with my instincts, mm-hmm. my instincts, just go with it. Usually that's always, that's always going to do me well. When I stop, when I start thinking how other people are going to play it, how other people are going to do it. It's like, it's just, it's no bueno. Yeah. It's really good. You know, you've done such a lovely body of work from the all the theater production you've you've starred in and produced television shows, movies. What paid gig for you proved to yourself? I'm good at this. What gig was that for you? You know. It's tough because this is why I love you so much. (laughs) You have so much confidence and belief in yourself. And I, you know, I, I at times do, I mean, I think you have to be at somewhat to, to be an actor, but, and to sustain being an actor. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm just always learning. I'm just always learning, you know, and I, and I'm just, I'm always still curious. And I, I, I feel like there's been, I mean, I remember hearing Jane Fonda talk about how uh, she's been chasing her entire career on the handful of times where she was in a scene and she was in the pocket, you know, when you're in the pocket with another person. Mm-hmm. And there's only been a handful of those times in her career, but she keeps chasing them. And they happen every once in a while and they keep chasing them. And so I feel like that's kind of happened for me. Like, you know, you, you, it, it, the, the alchemy in the scene is just magic. And then it all is like, whoa, what just happened? This is incredible. And then you chase it again. And then maybe your next time isn't like that, mm-hmm. e- even though two people are being truthful in a scene and whatnot, but it's not that. And you continue on and you keep chasing it, you know, because it's just, it's intoxicating. It's mm-hmm. intoxicating. And so, um, So I guess, you know, along the way, there's been more so there's been moments in my career where I've like, oh, I've kind of, I'm I'm on the map. I'm on the map. And I guess my first one where I felt like I'm on the map was when William Friedkin came and saw me in a play and he straight to offer me on another play he was doing at South Coast Rep. Wow. And I remember thinking, oh my God an Academy Award winning, I mean, just a, a, you know, he's a 
genius director. He's put, you know, he changed the landscape as a director during his time. He is, he thinks I'm good enough. I remember going, oh my God, that's cool. That is pretty cool. So, you know, and I've had those kind of moments, you know, throughout my career. This is us being one of them where, you know, they've let me play. It was a very small role in the beginning and they've continued to let me play in that playground. And I'm like, wow, that is. And you've got to show, you've shown so much depth and range in that role also. Thank you so Um, much. But yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was, it was a one and done. Do you know what I mean? I thought it was like one season I'm done. So that's, you know, that's another thing. And yeah, I'm trying to think of other really pivotal moments. I mean, I, I always feel like every time I get a job, I feel like, oh my God, this I just won the lottery, man. You know what I mean? I just won the lottery because it's true, right? We hear all those statistics of, you know, thousands of people submit and only a handful get to audition and then only a few get so-called pinned or whatever in consideration. And then one person gets it. And if that one person gets it and it's you, it's like, oh my God, I just won the lottery. Truly. You know, there are just too many crazy talented people out there. So Mm -hmm. talented. So, you know, it goes back to what you said about what you bring, your own unique thing that you bring. Yeah. 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 And that's why I I love that question, just because, of course, you know, as art is always in progress, right? We're always growing. You know, I know in the artist way, that was something that really stuck out with me. Those of you who haven't read the artist way. Oh, my God. Do the do yourself the favor and it's one of those, one of Please. those books you just will need to always go back. I have to tell you a story about the artist way after you after you say that. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I just was just that, that was something that's one of many things that stuck out, which is that art is always in motion. It's always it's always in process. So when we think oh, I could have done that better, well, well, yeah, I'm sure if we kept doing it, it'll we could always improve and find different right. things to tweak. You know, like a director, you know, or an editor is never always satisfied. But at some point, you have to stop and say, I'm going to submit that. So I just wanted to put that in there too. But even in the midst of that, knowing that your art will always evolve, taking moments to you know acknowledge when when you're proud of yourself or the gigs that really like you felt helped you graduate or you were seen in another light I think it's important because we're always we're always in this journey but having the moments to reflect and be like gosh wow that was a great moment or that was a really challenging space and I really feel like I left my stamp on that role like that it's those moments so that's where I was headed but what were you going to share about the art I mean do you love Christine everything she says I'm always like (laughs) <laughs> girl you're just I love your brains I love your brains so much and I love your soul you're just an amazing human being oh, I love you back Laura um okay so here's my story about the artist way I have to say I, mm-hmm. this is such an inspirational story you know um one of my uh colleagues on on this is us Chris Sullivan I listened to a podcast with Chris Sullivan he plays Toby on this is us right and he was talking about or maybe it was an interview I can't remember. It was it was either the the written word or he said it out out loud. But he it it was um, he was doing the artist's way because he was really having a slump in his career, and he decided to uh, start playing. You know, start start he started doing doing it, and at the end of it, he got his first Broadway show. And I remember thinking, okay, that's really inspiring. You know what? I got to do the artist's way. We were in the middle of a pandemic. I'm like, this is a perfect time to do the artist's way. What mm. else am I doing? Right. And so, so I started doing the artist's way and doing my pages and whatnot. And my thing was I was going to do this 30-day songwriting challenge. Do you remember that? Yes, 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 yes. Girl, I mean, I, I had some doozies. I had, you know, songs with just one note. I had songs that, you know, I worked on, you know, all day. I mean, I... Every day I had a new song. That was the rule. And sometimes I'd post them and sometimes I wouldn't, you know, sometimes I'd be brave and post them on my Instagram. So flash forward to here we are in December of this past year, I get an audition to that, that required me to sing and play guitar. Well, you know, my, my reps know that, you know, my musical background and, um, 
and I had it had to be in a different language. I can't really tell too much about it because it's coming out in August, and I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not. So I'm just going to say I had to I had to learn another language and sing right. a song. Okay, and so they um, so they asked my reps, does she have any other thing, any music things that she can send us? And so I was like. I got these songs. <laughs> I got these songs. They're really, you know, they're raw. They're not all perfect and done, but they are, you know, they are things that I've written. And I got the job. And it was, it's a very, it's a very big job. And um, I got to tell you, I really feel like I manifested that. I did, you know, I don't even feel like I manifested that. I did the work. Yeah. I did the work. Especially through that book, it just opens you up and gets you out of just your head yeah. and, and complaining and, and thinking of lack. You know what I mean? Like it just puts you into action for yourself. That's it. That's it. That's it. Because we can get a little woo-woo with manifestation, but I swear to you, if it's, if it's not backed with action, then it, it really is, in my opinion, it's meaningless. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be, there's got to be an action involved in it you know, uh, uh, behind it. Do you know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. if it's an action to be mindful every day at a certain time, like there's action required, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah, it's just, and it's, you know, one of the best gigs of my life that I've in my career that I've, that I've been able to do this past year. So I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Come on. So, well, I guess we, we got a little while before a trailer comes out. So we will stay tuned family. We will stay tuned. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. You know, you kind of started talking about it. It's a perfect... Um, transition you know ebbs and flows of this industry yeah you know there are going to be times what the one thing that is consistent in this industry is the inconsistency everything is temporary so how have you and I know you you and I have had private offline conversations but you know a lot of times it can feel very isolating you feel like you're the only one going through something no one else can relate even though people can but it still helps to just hear people so when you get in close whether it's a a slump in just auditions or it's down to you and one other person and you don't book it like how do you process and then how do you come out of it what is that process like for you these days well I've, I've adopted a little bit more of a sense of humor now that I'm a little older <laughs> because I used to get really, I mean, it's, it, it was really challenging for me, but you know, you, you, you can't, you can't sustain that. You can't sustain that. You know, if you want, if you're in for the long game to go to that place all the time, all the time is just not sustainable. And so what I do, anytime I have an audition right after the audition, I rip up the sides, it's done it's done. You know, it is done. I got to play, I got to do that thing and it's done. And I'm pretty good at that now. Wasn't always like that. But I think the most important thing for me is to have a support group, you know, support system in place. You know, I've, there've been many tears I've cried to you out of frustration. Um, a lot of victim seat that I've been in that hasn't looked pretty, you know, all the stuff that, that, that happens, but, and, we need a support system other than our significant others or our, you know, family, because it's yeah. easy, it's easy to burn them out. I mean, my husband, he has like a three minute capacity to talk about the business and then his eyes start wandering. He's just <laughs> it's like boring. <laughs> on to the next, you know, Do I miss it to me? <laughs> it's, yeah, he has no patience for it, you know? And so, um, not that he's not supportive, he's very supportive, but in terms of that whole thing, I mean, that's the journey of an actor. So, you know, um, I, you know, I have my, my, you know, support 
system friends that I, I always make sure that I have, especially women for me, you know, and the guys, the guys for them that I, I can lean on and say, you know, I'm really, really sad today. This, this happened and, you know, I can't believe I didn't get it or, you know, whatever it is. I just, we need those people. LA, especially, and I know you have listeners all around the world, but LA especially can be a very, very lonely town. Yeah. And it is, you know, it's, it's hard to find community because it's not like New York or Chicago where, you know, where you you have these small apartments. So you're mostly out of your house. You know what right. I mean? And everybody's kind of out of their house in LA. Everybody's indoors. Everybody's always in, of course, this pandemic didn't help that, but you know, we're all kind of like, oh, it's too late traffic, whatever. Right. <laughs> and so, um, so it's just really important to have a couple people in your back pocket that you can really you know, just, just call in that 11th hour when you're feeling like, oh shit, you know, I just can't believe it. I can't believe it didn't get to remind you that you're talented and you know, that you, that you're enough and, and that, you know, that's the journey and onward we go, you know, I will say though, always having another project, you know, during the pandemic, as you know, I, I produced and was in a um, site specific play. Mm -hmm. I was going to go crazy if I didn't, if I didn't, uh, work that muscle, I was really starting to get wacky. And so I, I had to self-preserve. I had to take care of myself. And I know what that means. That means doing the work, yeah. you know? So I did a play, you know, up on Mulholland drive outside poolside and it, um, saved, it's just saved me. It saved me going back to full circle when I was 13 and how the arts saved me, mm -hmm. you know, during tough times in my childhood you know, it saved me and um, it gave me so much joy and reminded me of my why, you know, I need to constantly be reminded of my why because it's so easy in this business to get sucked into, you know, the rat race and the hustle, yeah. the, just getting to the next level, getting to the next level, getting to the next level. And, you know, if you stop and get quiet, you're like, geez, this is a lot of work. What was my why? Right. <laughs> You know, you got to have that always at hand, you know, for me at least, you know, and the only way I can get that, my why is by the doing, you know, I can journal myself away, but I, 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 I need to be doing it. You yeah. know, I need to be doing, I need to learn a new monologue or, you know, read a classic play or, you know, whatever it is, I need to be in the doing of the craft of it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when my business gets too out of whack and it's all business, all business, all business, auditioning for business, auditioning for business, and I'm not giving just the joy of the craft of it, mm -hmm. the play. I get, I get you yeah, the play, the play. I get, I get a little weird. Yeah. I, I, and I, what I'm hearing is you, the main thing I'm, I'm hearing first is that you acknowledge the feeling. It's not pretending it didn't happen. Yeah. So everybody, you know, those of you listening and watching, everybody has a different process for release, releasing roles, releasing opportunities. Um, even the work that you did, like, wow, that got to, I, I was telling, I've had a realization for that recently where I was just like, wow, I just, there was some fun roles that I did this week. It wasn't anything that I had booked, but I was just like, I had four auditions. They were all so different. And I was like, oh, that was, that's been my, fun cause I'm not in a class right now. So exactly. my, my class is like watching TV, dissecting television and performances. But then when I get to like step in and I get a script, I'm like, Oh, all right. What am I going to learn about myself today? You right. Know? Exactly. So, but I, but honoring when something hurts, you know, because we're in an industry too, where people are like, okay, get over it onto the next, or you get, you know, bad news or something that didn't work out. And then an hour later you have a new audition and you, you don't have time. You literally can't sit in that. Yeah. You can, but then that's the, at the risk of not doing a good job on the next thing. So we can often just be in a state of onto the next, onto the next and not honoring what we're feeling or grieving, whatever feels like a loss, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that plus hearing about having people who are, you can, to, that can support you. It doesn't have to be a huge circle either, but just some, some people on speed dial, you know? For sure, for sure. And, and it really speaks to why actors right now are writing and producing and directing. It's kind of like, it, that's self-preservation -pres right there. It's like, 
you know, sitting around and waiting for the phone to ring or waiting to get pinned or waiting to get booked on a job or waiting to be on set. It's like, if you're in the doing, it's like the energetically, you know, it, for me, it's always been this way. It's like when I'm in the doing of, of you know, constantly in motion, mm-hmm. it's like that, that thing, well, you want to get something done, ask a busy person. You know, it's like, I, I, you know, things gravitate towards me. Do you know what I mean? But I have Absolutely. to be doing something. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Work but guess work. Right. I love that. I love that. I love that. And thank you for that, for that transparency. You know, y'all just need to know you're not alone. Everybody, yeah. we all deal differently and process differently. But as you hear, you've heard some from so many working actors from this series. And even someone, because someone could easily be like, well, you've been on This Is Us and you've been on this and Christine, you've been on this and you don't get it. Like, no. Like, and you talked about levels. The level just keeps changing, right? The bottom of the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So you, you're you striving, right? But there comes points where you just have to just be like, okay, what, like you said, gets back to center. Why yeah. are you doing this? Where's the love? Yeah, and, and the, st- the truth is the stakes get higher. So, you know, it's like, you know, the jobs get bigger and bigger. And so, which means the stakes get higher and higher. Now you got a mortgage. Now you got this, now you got that, you know, it's like, you know, so, so the start with, that's why the best thing is when, when people are starting out to be able to, you know, rejoice in the, the little, the little, you know, the little wins just as much as when, uh, you know, Dallas taught me that, you know, you got to celebrate those, one line co-stars you got to celebrate the hell out of them man mm. because you got to be practice and celebrating because like I, like we said it's a lot you know a lot of times it's you know it's this business can be like a lottery you know it's like you can do the work and you know there's just so many talented people you know so you got to just keep you know so it's I, I don't know I no guarantees so no guarantees one last question before we go, kind of on the same vein. I want for a moment just to you picture in your mind's eye the actor who's watching, who's been in it 15 plus years, seasoned, but has hit a low. Things have gotten quiet. And they're wondering, maybe my time is up. Maybe I should just throw in the towel. Who am I kidding? Maybe I'm done. And then I want you to also hold in your mind's eye, the bright eyed, brand new, excited to break in, but can't seem to get a breakthrough. Who also feels, who am I kidding? Maybe I should just throw in the towel. If you could just offer any word of wisdom, love to speak to their heart, up to encourage them, what would you offer them? Well, I mean, I think when you get the bug, the acting bug, it's, it's important to honor that you have a story to tell. You need to, you need to get that out into the world. We need to hear it. I need to hear it from all walks of life. I need to see it. So, you know, and you're important to me, (laughs) you know, that's the first thing, but for the veteran actors, when they're, when they're, when they're struggling, it's time to, you know, also, I was at a women in film function and one of the showrunners was talking about how uh, she, she's an actor and she was talking about how she was transitioning to try and become a, it was so, it was so slow that she was like, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start directing and, and producing this thing that I've always wanted to do. And she was really, really nervous about doing that because it was gonna put her out of the game for a year or a year and a half. And what ended up happening is it made her a better actor for doing that because now she got, she came to see, because it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. This is such a team sport, you know, being in, you know, on camera, well, just all of it, you know, in theater and whatnot, there are many moving parts. And the more, you know, those parts and where you fit in and can help out and it just makes you better. It makes you better. So, you know, never underestimate reading with somebody who's self-taping and, and, you know, and, and, you know, that to me is, you know, I always say once a day, I got to act once a day, I got to act. So that counts, that counts reading with somebody, you know, and, um, 
you know, to, to be able to acknowledge that, um, to, 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 to read a book on a, a learn a, a new, you know, uh, a new, learn a new skill, learn a dialect. You know what I mean? All those things are going to pay off. It's the long game. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing to remember. It is the long game. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and, you know, I, you know, I'm not a household name, but I, you know, I'm, I've, this, this, this job and the, you know, last few jobs have been the first time in my career where I was like, oh my God, I feel so seen. Mm -hmm. I feel so seen. And, you know, it's taken a lot of years to get there. And, it, and there's just no easy way, you know, you got to have all those co-stars, at least for me, you know, it, it, the experience of, of it all to, uh, to get there. So, you know, the more, you know, you can, you can just keep, keep in the, in the doing. I mean, I keep saying it a lot, but I, I just know that when, you know, when I'm sitting around and, and, and I'm feeling very much like a victim, I get monkey brain and I start going into dark places and it's like, and it's none of it's true. You know, most of it's not true, you know, and it's just, it's when I get at, you know, get into action that, you know, I start finding that, you know, that some of the, that, that solutions are happening. Do you know what I mean? And things start coming together a little bit more. So, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. We all need to hear each other's stories. We've all got a different perspective of life. It's important. And, you know, I, anybody who's listening to this is on the right path right now. I'm telling you right now, honest to God, if you're listening to Christine Horn, you have hit, the, hit a gold mine because she is such a truth teller about this industry and she's so talented and she's so knowledgeable, especially with auditioning and TV, a lot of stuff, but it, you know, especially with the way she, as, as you can see, she books all the time. And so, you know, sticking around for those types of things, when you're having a down day and hearing those, these podcasts and hearing these, you know, hearing the message is, uh, you know, I've many times I've listened to to Christine's uh, Motivation Monday or Wednesday Wisdom or something. You know, I'm like, oh man, I'm having a shit day. Here, where is it? Where is she? Where is she? So, yeah, no, I got I, mad love for her. Thank you, I love you back. And I thank you for that, for pouring in because we all just need to be reminded, you know, sometimes just, okay, I can do this another day. And I, I truly believe the calling would not be you knew if it weren't for a reason. Right. Now, how that looks and how you show up within it can change and like, and, you know, how many casting directors have you talked to over the years who's like, yeah, I started as an actor. If that was not my lane, I couldn't take the stress. And, you know, like they'll tell you, you know, some casting directors are very transparent. Like I couldn't handle it. Kudos to you. But yeah. I still love the arts and I still love movies. And so I wanted a cast movie. So you just never know. Also, I would say stay open to, I don't know, to what, to what your soul is calling for next. You might, it might just be shifting how it shows up. So that's just, yeah. In life, what a great, mm -hmm. uh, that's in life. What a great, what a great message. Again, Christine Horn brings it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Laura, Nimi, look, y'all, I know you're curious about the stuff Laura's working on. I'm going to have links to all her things in the show notes so you can find her online and you'll you realize, oh, I saw, I already saw her in X, Y, and Z. Cause that, that happens to me all the time. I'm like, they're like, I don't, I, I was telling somebody in another interview, I think I'm at that point in my career where people are like, I seen her in something. She's, you know, she was in the thing with the man, you know, the people I, when it was watching. I get a lot of that. Wait, where did, where did you go to high school? <laughs> so we're winning, we're all winning. Laura Nimi, thank you so much for saying yes. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for sharing your story with the listeners. Um, I'm sure it inspired so many and people can see themselves within you. And those of you watching, thank you for tuning in to Booking Magnet Magic. Remember that you have a gift that the world needs to see and each and every one of us is magical and magnetic. So 
Don't forget it. Lord. Mm -hmm. I love you, lady. Thank you all Thanks, for thank listening. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.